What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. I will continue my conversation with you concerning the complete history of boxing. On the evening of September 9th, 1935, the Bannerway King veteran Jackie Brown was upset by Benny Lynch in the second round to become the brand new National Boxing Association Flyway King in Manchester, United Kingdom. The King Hall Bellevue, Manchester is where this contest was performed. It was for the NBA British Boxing Board of Control. 22-year-old Benny Lynch stood 5 foot 4 inches. He was a flyweight and had a 65-inch reach. 25-year-old Jackie Brown stood 5 foot 5 inches. He was a flyweight and had a record of 77 wins, 14 losses, and 25 knockouts. Benny Lynch was born April 2, 1913 in Scotland, United Kingdom. He would die August 6, 1946. He was 33 years of age at the time of his death and he would reside in Scotland, England. Now he stood 5 foot 4 inches, he was a flyer, and had a 65 inch reach, had a record of 88 wins, 119 total bouts, 14 losses, 34 knockouts, 17 draws, and he was not stopped in his career. He fought from 1931 to 1938. He was a very, very good fighter for his time. He was in a ring with fighters such as Burt Kirby, Jackie Brown, Kale Morgan, Small Montana, and Peter Kane, just to name a few. On September 13, 1935, Filipino welterweight sensation and future middleweight king, Seferino Garcia, had almost pulled up a first round knockout. It was a classic to become the welterweight championship king. He had down Chicago's Barney Ross two times before losing a 10 round decision in San Francisco, California. Now he was in a ring with fighters such as Jackie Blair and Phil Fur. Leo Zarita, Fred Apostoli, Alan Matthews, very good black fighter. I have to do a profile on him as well. Steve Belois had a brother by the name of Mike Belois, who was a champion in his time. Anton Christopherides, California Jackie Wilson, Izzy Genazzo, Bobby Poncho, Lloyd Marshall, and Billy Seuss. Of course, Henry Armstrong and many others. Seferino Garcia was born August 26, 1906. He died January 1, 1981 in Los Angeles, California. Stood 5 foot 6 inches as middleweight. Had a 70 inch reach. Fought from 1923 to 1945. Had a total bout career of 164 bouts. 120 wins. 76 knockouts. And 30 losses. He had 14 draws and was stopped 6 times. He faced a young Peter Jackson. Kid ass tackle. Back to back wins. Agnesio Fernandez, Philly Steele, Young Corbett III, and King Tut. Barney Ross, Henry Armstrong, and Ken Overland, who he would lose his title to. September 16, 1935, Small Montana would defeat Midget Wargas in 10 rounds in Oakland for the New York recognition as Flyweight King. Referee was Frankie Van Awards, and he would award Small Montana with a victory, Oakland, California Auditorium. Wargas would suffer a bad cut over his left eye. It happened in the eighth round. It was an $8,000 gate. Referee was Eddie Burns. 109-pound, 22-year-old Montana stood 5 foot 4 inches. He was a flyweight. Had a record of 59 wins, 4 losses, and 8 knockouts. 112 pound, 25 year old Wargas. Stood 5 foot 3 and a half inches. He was a flyweight and had a record of 150 wins, 18 losses, and 15 knockouts. And when you look at Small Montana, he was in the ring with Little Dato and Jackie Jurek. His name was Benjamin Gann. He was born February 25th, 1913. He was born in the Philippines. He died August 4th, 1976. He was 63 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in the Philippines. He was born February 24th, 1913 in the Philippines. Now, he stood 5 foot 4 inches. He was a flyweight and fought from 1930 to 1941. Had a total bout career of 114 bouts, 81 wins, 22 losses, and 11 knockouts. 
September 16, 1935, he won a New York Sack Flyweight title for Midget War Gas. July 3, 1936, he won a USA Hawaii State Flyweight Bantamweight Championship title. On January 19, 1937, he would win a new NBA Flyweight Championship title for Benny Lynch. September 19, 1935, Babe Eddie Risco defeats Teddy Uroth 15 rounds in Boston to win the NBA New York recognition as middleweight champion. The New York SAC middleweight champion was Teddy Uroth. He was dropped twice in the sixth round and the seventh round. He was dropped both times for a ninth count. Uroth was only given the first round. His eye would begin to close. The judges felt it was not necessary for this bout to continue. Eddie Bay Risco, his name was Henry L. Pulowski, he was born July 14, 1911, Syracuse, New York. He died March 7, 1957 in Syracuse, 45 years of age at the time of his death. And he would reside in New York. Stood 5 foot 10 inches as middleweight champion. Had a 72 and a half inch reach. Had a total bout career of 103 fights. 65 wins, 12 knockouts, 26 losses, and 12 draws. On September 24th of 1935, Joe Lewis would drop Max Bear three times and then stop him in the fourth round with a triple left hook combination that was a thing to see. New York's Yankee Stadium. Joe Lewis would get married to Marva Trotter just a few hours before. He was a newlywed. After the bout, he would walk over to Willis Avenue Bridge and he would hold his wife's hand. He would be asked a question. Who's the one that wears the pants in the ready? Where's the pants in the house? Where's the pants everywhere? He said him. <laughs> and he said, would it be a tough about between Max Bear and your wife? And he said, it would be a tough about at home every night. And I thought that was interesting. After walking over the Willis Avenue Bridge, Joe Lewis and his wife would make it to the Savoy Ballroom. They had a special seating waiting for them anytime they arrived. That seat was not assigned to anyone else, whether Joe Lewis and his wife showed up or not. That's how much respect he had. Chick Webb would be the main drummer, and he was the band leader for one of the best bands in New York at that time. And they would celebrate the victory of the great Joe Lewis, as they would once again in 1938, when Joe Lewis would regain his victory over Max Mellon, the Black Ewan. What memories Joe Lewis would share. November 15, 1935, Cisco Escobar defeats Lou Salica, 15 rounds. New York. He would gain his NBA Bantamweight Championship title. 1935, Escobar faced Juan Zarita, Mexico City. He was losing 10 rounds. May 28th of that year, Joey Archibald, excuse me, of New York, six round technical knockout. June 21st of that year, Johnny Banks, Brooklyn, New York, five round knockout. August 7th of 1935, uh, I'm sorry, of 1936. Pete Sanso, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Be a victory for the National Boxing Association. It would be a Bantamweight Championship defense. August 26th of 1936, Lou Salica would fight for the NBA Bantamweight Championship title. It would be a first round defense in 15 rounds. November 15th, Lou Salica would fight for the NBA Bantamweight Championship title. It'll be a defense, 15-round victory on behalf of Cisco Escobar. He was the first Puerto Rican champion. They would name a stadium in Puerto Rico after him. Cisco Escobar. What a phenomenal fighter he was. November 29th of 1935, Barney Ross takes a 10-round victory over Sefrino Garcia in Chicago. At the age of two, Barney Ross would move to Chicago. 
He was originally from New York. He moved his, with his family, and Ross would lose his father to Al Capone's loan sharks, where he had trouble keeping his weekly payments. He opened up a grocery store, borrowed money from the mob, but unfortunately for his dad, he would be shot up in the store. He came up short two separate occasions, was worn for the last time. Barney needed the money, so his dad made a decision what was more important. He felt giving part of the money to Barney Ross was more important. And two hours later, his mob would show up asking for money. He explained to them what happened. They didn't want to hear it, and he took care of them. What was amazing about the time of Barney Ross was that this was not uncommon. Now, Barney Ross was 14 years old. His mother would suffer from a nervous breakdown because of what happened with his father. To prevent further punishment, Barney Ross decided to become a street fighter for Al Capone. His younger sister became an orphan. Barney won the Chicago Golden Gloves. June 23, 1933, September 18, 1933, defeat junior world welterweight champion, he became in 1934 and in 1938 welterweight champion, and he held that title consistently. He would lose that title to Henry Armstrong at the New York's Madison Square Garden Bowl. Armstrong would carry Barney Ross for 15 rounds, and Barney Ross would become a legend overnight. Henry Armstrong would be the fourth black welterweight champion in boxing history. December 13th, 1935, Joe Lewis was stopped. A huge Spain heavyweight by the name of Paulino Escadon, New York's Madison Square Garden. 19,945 spectators would watch the former butcher named Woodchopper. He was the youngest sibling of nine. Referee was Arthur Donovan. He stopped the contest in the fourth round, saved Paulino Escadon from further punishment. He had never been knocked out before the bout with Joe Lewis. And that was a thing to be seen. But a young man from Germany, who went by the name of the Black Eulen, his name was Max Mulling. He would grab some fight film because he was being promoted for an upcoming bout. And he witnessed Joe Lewis drop his hands every time Polino Escadon would lean his head in. And that's what gave him the idea that Joe Lewis was vulnerable to right hand leads. Escadon would retire after his fight with Joe Lewis and never be seen in a boxing ring again. The judges were Charlie Lynch and Marty Monroe. Joe Lewis was 21 years old. He had a record of 22, no losses, and 18 knockouts. He stood six foot one and a half inches and had 76 inch reach. Polino Escadon was 36 years old. He had a record of 49 wins, 16 losses, 3 draws, and 33 knockouts. He stood 5 foot 10 inches. He faced Joe Lewis, Max Baer, Max Schmeling, and Primo Carnera, as well as Harry Wills. On December 20th of 1935, middleweight Jack Mavoy knocks out NBA New York middleweight champion Eddie Bay Briscoe in New York's Madison Square Garden. What was amazing about that contest, two minutes and 48 seconds, referee Billy Kavanaugh will stop the contest and award Briscoe the championship. Now, Risco was smashed with an overhand right to the jaw, and he visited the canvas over five times. 24-year-old baby Eddie Risco stood five for 10 inches. He was a middleweight and had a 72 and a half inch reach. McAvoy was 27 years old. He stood five for nine and a half inches as middleweight and had a 73 and a half inch reach. Now, Jock McAvoy, his name was Joseph Patrick Bamford. He was born November 20th, 1908, in the United Kingdom. Died November 20th, 1971, in the United Kingdom. He stood 5 foot 9 inches. He was a light heavyweight, had a 73 inch reach. 
Fought from 1927 to 1945. Had a total bout career of 147 bouts, 132 wins, 14 losses, and 88 knockouts. He defeated young Joe Lauer. Lynn Harvey was the British champion at that time. January 15, 1936. Welshman heavyweight Tommy Farr defeats Philadelphia light heavyweight. The Philly Phantom. Tommy Lachlan. He fought him at the Royal Albert Hall, London, United Kingdom. He weighed 191 pounds. Very good fighter. Newspaper thought the Lachlan had won. Seven out of ten rounds. July 21st, 1933. Defeats Randy Jones. British Boxing Board of Control. Light heavyweight title. At the Empire Theater. He won a Commonwealth British Light Heavyweight Championship title, the British Boxing Board of Control. Tommy Farr, his name was the Tony Popular Terror, <laughs> born March 12, 1913 in Wales, United Kingdom. He died March 1st, 1986 in Wales as well. He was 72 years of age at the time of his rest. Stood six foot one and a half inches as heavyweight and had an 81 inch reach. Fought from 1926 to 1953. Had a record of 142 total bouts, 86 wins, 35 losses, and 24 knockouts. January 17th of 1936, heavyweight Charlie Ratliff was put to sleep in one round in Chicago. 72,341 came to Chicago to watch Joe Lewis and Charlie Ratliff mix it up at the stadium. The referee was Phil Collins. Joe Lewis was 21 years old. He stood six foot one and a half inches as heavyweight. Had a 76 inch reach. Had a record of 23 wins and 19 knockouts. Charlie Rattles was 32 years old. He stood six foot three inches as heavyweight and had a 78 inch reach. He had a record of 61 wins, eight losses and 52 knockouts. And this was going to be the contest that would show what Joe Lewis was made of. Charlie Rattlers would face James J. Brodick, May 13, 1932, at the Boston Garden. He was a car salesman. 16,486 were in attendance. He was in the Boxing Hall of Fame in 2015. Charlie Rattler was born October 28, 1903, in North Dakota. He died January 4, 1970. Six years in the boxing ring. 74 total bouts. 61 wins, 8 losses, 3 draws and 54 knockouts. 2015, he would make the Minnesota Boxing Hall of Fame. Good stand-up boxer was Charlie Rattler. Not as good as Joe Lewis. And that was the bout that would signify Joe Lewis being a main event world championship caliber fighter. Hit him with a vicious left hook. His hand never moved, just turned over, clipped on the jaw, and Ratliff went down. What a beautiful performance that evening by Joe Lewis. Monday night, January 20th, 1936, Marcel Thiel would defeat Lou Brolov. Lou Brolov was a southpaw, and Marcel Thiel claimed foul, and that's how he would get the victory. Very questionable foul. Four rounds. Paris Franklin had retained his International Boxing Union World Championship Contest. Marcel Thiel had a claim foul against William Gorilla Jones, and that's how he would take the title from the second black middleweight champion in boxing history. Marcel Thiel was 31 years old, so 5 foot 8 inches as middleweight, had a 68 and a half inch reach, had a record of 104 wins, 19 losses, 10 draws, and 49 knockouts. 24 year old Lou Bullard stood 5 foot 7 inches as middleweight, he was a southpaw, had a record of 92 wins, 18 losses, and 53 knockouts. Marcel Theo would defend his IBU middleweight championship title 11 times. September 23, 1937, Theo won a majority decision in every round before 33-year-old losing on a cut over his eye. His name was Fred Apostoli. March 2, 1936, Freddie Miller would defeat Petey Cerrone. 15 rounds in Florida. To retain his World Featherweight Championship title, Freddie's southpaw jab gave Cerrone problems. 
The thing about Freddie Miller, Sharon would eventually defeat him. And he would now become the featherweight champion. He would lose that title to Henry Armstrong, 1937, Madison Square Garden, causing Henry Armstrong to become only the second black fighter to win a championship title in Madison Square Garden and the first American black featherweight champion that evening. That Cerrone and Armstrong fight was also Mike Jacobs' first championship contest that he would promote in Madison Square Garden. Remarkable. Now, Cerrone had a record of 150 total bouts, 24 losses, 25 knockouts. He would hold the NBA featherweight championship title. He was born November 21st, 1906 in Birmingham, Alabama. He died July 3rd, 1994. He was five foot three inches and weighed 119 and a half inch pounds. Excuse me, 19 and a half pounds. He fought as high as 134 and a half pounds. He was in the ring with Al Foreman, Benny Bass, Tony Leto, and Sammy Mendel. Benny Bass and Henry Armstrong. He would fight for Della Barb and the amateurs and come short of winning an Olympic medal. Peter Cerrone, very underrated fighter. Very good and strong for his day. But he would be the man that would be responsible for Henry Armstrong winning the featherweight championship title. This happened in 1937. Henry Armstrong was 27-0 with 26 knockouts that evening. And along the way for that journey of 1937, he would be 27-0 with 26 knockouts. The only man he didn't knock out was Aldi Spaulding. But he would pick up a featherweight championship title and also fight that same year, Benny Bass. Oh, what a remarkable career Henry Armstrong had. March 13, 1936, John Henry Lewis defeats Jackie McCoy, 15 rounds in New York's Madison Square Garden. And he defended his light heavyweight championship crown. John Henry Lewis was a world light heavyweight champion, goes 15 rounds with the British middleweight and future British light heavyweight champion. McAvoy, his name was Jock to be exact. New York's Madison Square Garden, the referee was Arthur Donovan. Judges were Marty Monroe and Charlie Lynch. They award Lewis the victory. Now, Jack McAvoy was 27 years old. He stood 5 foot 9 and a half inches, weighed 155 to 178 pounds. Had a 73 inch reach, for from 1927 to 1945. Had a record of 104 wins, 7 losses, 1 draw, and 68 knockouts. John Henry Lewis was 21 years old. He stood 5 foot 11 inches, weighed 172 and 192 pounds. He had a 75 and a half inch reach, for from 1929 to 1939. Had a record of 56 wins, 8 losses, 4 draws, 34 knockouts. He was champion from 1935 to 1939. He was a remarkable champion. He was also the first black American light heavyweight champion in boxing history. May 8, 1936, Tony Canzanieri gets stunned and bounced right to left. <laughs> but he bounced right back to win a remarkable 10-round comeback behind victory. From the babyface assassin, Jimmy McLaurin. The contest took place at the New York's Madison Square Garden. The referee was Arthur Donovan. He had it 8-2. Judge Charlie Lynch had it 8-2. And Judge Charlie Delvin had it 8-2 as well. All for the former three-division Hall of Fame champion, Tony Canzanieri. Canzanieri would lose a return go with Jim McLaurin. On October 5th, 1936, in 10 rounds at the Madison Square Garden Famous Arena. They lost to Lou Ambers, September 3rd, 1936, New York's Madison Square Garden, losing his World Lightweight Championship title. Tony Canzanieri, Lou Ambers, John Henry Lewis, Joe Lewis, Chuck McAvoy, Barney Ross, and Henry Armstrong. Many of the names that we mentioned today, Max Smelling, Joe Lewis, 
Polino Oscar Don, many of them, or superb in their day. They should get recognition as they will. But this series is more about what happened during the course of the decades. And as you can see, that most of these men made tremendous contributions month after month, year after year. And famous arenas such as Madison Square Garden, Yankee Stadium, and Broadway Arena and Sunnyside Garden, as well as St. Nicholas Arena and Eastern Parkway, many of them. But they were phenomenal fighters, came at a time when most men were tough and rugged. I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. We're going to continue this series, Complete History of Boxing. Stay with me as we complete this journey. Be well. Thanks for watching. Peace.